we are going to deal with compound interest. Um, this is actually very similar. It's a different formula, but it's really the same. Um, so we talked about percent growth. Remember when we talked about percent growth? Yes. Um, so percent growth, when we said something like 8% growth, we wanted to do 100% plus 8% growth, right, to give us 108%. Okay, so this formula, because we're always, like, getting interest, uh, when we're calculating interest, what happens is we do 100% of the initial value, which is really this 100% that we've been talking about all along. Probably. This was horrible. Um, and then your I is kind of like your percent growth as a decimal. Okay, so really when we're talking about interest, it's already, like we already know how to do it. And these things are actually going to be basically the same variables. And this is going to be like our B value. And this N value is kind of like our X value. So these things are always all very similar to the formula that we've been working with all along. Okay. So capital A is not the same as lowercase a in our old, old uh, formula. Capital A means future amount. So B is the one in the X and the one in the I? Hmm? B is like the one plus I. Oh, which is 100 plus A. Yep. P is what we call our principal value, which is essentially initial value. But when we talk about interest, it's called the principal. Okay. Our I. Our I is going to be our interest rate as a decimal. Uh, oops, I started writing initial. Interest rate as a decimal. Okay, guys, lots of little conversations happening right now. Focus in for me. This is not a long lesson, okay? Okay, and our N value, Carlo, is slightly different than our X value. Um, our X value, we used to do total time over... Uh, the number or the growth period or decay period for X or for N in this case we want to know within our certain number of years um, how often how, or how many times our interest gets compounded and I'm going to explain the word compounded to you in a second but basically just for now this is going to be number of compounds per year Uh, times our total number of years, and that will give us the number of times in our total time span that the interest gets compounded. Okay, for our examples today, our number of compounds each year is always going to be one. So really, in our examples today, n is just going to be equal to number of years. But once we start to change the compounding period, the n value will also change with it. Um, and then the other thing is, is that when our compounding our number of compounds per year changes the interest rate as a decimal actually needs to be divided by uh, number of compounds per year but again in our examples today it's just going to be compounded once a year so we won't have to worry about that and I'll I'll, I'll expand on this idea a little bit more tomorrow um, okay so the one in the formula above I briefly explained that to you um, but the idea of compound interest is that when we do compound interest, what happens is each time I compound my interest or I add my interest onto my principal amount, I actually start earning interest on the amount I, let's say I do an investment, I put $100 in and I invest it. I will start earning interest on the $100 and then I compound that interest that I earned, which means I add it to that $100. Let's say now I have $105 from the interest I earned. And then once my time moves forward, I actually earn interest on the $100 I put in 
plus the extra $5 that I earned from compounding or adding on my interest to my principal amount the first time. So the one in our formula, the one represents 100% of the principal value. So the amount that I put in myself or that I, lo that I was loaned by someone And then we add interest onto it, okay? Just like how we do with percent growth. So in order for me to be able to do what we call compounding or adding our interest onto the amount that we invested ourselves. I need that one plus my I, so 100% of what I had plus the interest that I earn in that formula somewhere, right? I want to get back my principal amount and I want to get back some interest on top of that. And then it also allows me to earn interest on my previous interest as time goes on. So the formula is designed so that I can earn interest on every single time that interest gets compounded. I earn more and more interest on my amount and also on the extra little interest pieces that I uh, earned from before. So we, uh, this allows us to earn interest or sometimes it can work against us if it's a loan that we took out and then we owe interest, that can be bad. Uh, but it allows us to earn interest on the principal value plus previously earned interest from past compounds. Okay, so what I'll get out from the interest formula is when I'm trying to calculate something to do with interest, I'll actually get the total amount of money that I have. I'll get, if I put in $1,000, I'll get out for my interest formula, maybe like $1,000, like $1,173. It will give me back my $1,000 plus the extra interest that I earned on top of that. It gives me the total amount in that account or whatever, in that investment or from that loan or whatever. Okay. All right, so that's the idea. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple examples with this. This time we're just gonna talk about uh, interest that gets compounded annually, which is once a year. So when you see annually, like in this question, this is one compound per year, which means my interest gets added like onto my principal amount at the end of the year. Okay, so you, of course, you are the Monopoly hat because that's the best Monopoly piece. Um, have just passed go and you receive $200. You decide to invest it for four years, earning 4% interest per year, so each year, compounded annually, so once a year. How much will you have after four years? Okay, so. Wait, I'm confused. The one in the formula, does that ever change? No, nope, that will always be one. It's 100% of what you invested. So what are you So this is, this is when I say number of compounds per year, like this right here, and this, that's what I need to use it for. Okay? Okay. So let's enter into our formula. We have capital P, we have capital A, we have I, and we have N. Okay, so I think we need to know from this, if this is asking us how much we'll have after four years, that is our future value. That's our capital A in our compound interest formula. How much do we invest? What's our principal amount here? $200 is our principal amount. That's how much is being put into this investment. I interest rate as a decimal. How do I make 4.7% into a decimal, Sam? 0.047. So the quick trick is to move the decimal left twice and then you put in zeros for 
any values that you don't have there. Okay, so I move the decimal left twice, it's 0 0.047, or you can take 4.7 and divide it by 100. That's what percent means, it means out of 100. So, uh, and then usually for I, we will divide this by number of compounds per year, but when we're dealing with our question today, it's just one compound per year, so we usually just get back that interest rate as a decimal, as it was before. Okay, and then N, number of compounds per year, which is one, times total number of years, which is four. So within four years, my interest has been compounded four times if it gets compounded once a year. That's the idea. So, so really what I want to know for N is how many times over the total time span has the interest been compounded. So if it gets compounded once a year for four years, my N is four. Yeah. Okay, for our questions today, it's going to be once a year only, and then we'll do more with it tomorrow. Okay, so we're going to enter into our new interest formula, and we're looking for A. And if you'd like before you, you can enter it into your calculator just like that, or you can add in here and then just enter into your calculator. Um, please do not be the guy, again, I said this yesterday, I'm going to say it again because I know someone's going to do this. Don't multiply 200 by 1.047. You're doing the exponent on 1.047 first, and then you can multiply it by 200. If you just put it in calculator. Your calculator should know the right way to do that, yeah. So if you just put it in, your calculator will take care of it for you. So what do we get here? Two, four, Luis? Okay. 240.334, did you say? What was it? 3346 or something like that? 3348. Okay. So if it's 3348, this is money that we're dealing with, so it's just going to be 33 cents, right? So all of my interest questions, because I'm dealing with money, these will be rounded to two decimals, okay? So we're going to say, therefore, in four years, the investment is worth $240.33, okay? 200 of that was the amount of money that I put in myself initially. How much interest did I actually earn? $40.33. 200 of that is mine, and now I have $40 more dollars and 33 cents. That's the interest that I actually earned on that investment, right? The interest is just $40.33. Yeah. You got it. Good. Any questions on that one? Not too bad. Pretty straightforward. Can I scroll? Yeah. Okay. Last one, I think. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so you are about to go to university. When you are done in four years at the end of university, you want to buy a new car. The one you're looking at costs $16,000. If you can find an investment that pays 10.9% interest per year, very hard to find, very volatile uh, investment, um, how much should you invest now? Okay, invest now. What does that tell us we're looking for? Yes, our initial value in our compound interest formula is P. It's our principal value. That's our unknown. Okay, when you see words like start, now, initially, stuff like that, that's, your, that's asking for your starting value. Okay, how much do I want to have in the future? 16,000. 16, Good. Okay, I interest rate as a decimal. What's my I? Yes, thank you. 0 0.109. I take this, I move it left twice, and then I have it as a decimal. Okay, and technically this is over one year, right? Interest per year, and this should actually probably say compounded annually. I will have to specify that, compounded once a year. Okay, so technically I'm taking this and I'm dividing it by one, but I don't think it's necessary that we show that because we know it's going to be the same. 
Nope, I'm going to show you various ones tomorrow. But for now, it's just going to be annually. Um, OK, four years compounded once every year. How many times has my interest been compounded in the four-year period? Four times. That's n. OK? OK, what I could do to save myself a tiny bit of time here, uh, sorry, I just wrote that wrong. Um, what I could do to save myself a tiny bit of time is just prearrange this formula so that P is isolated. So what I would want to do is just divide that whole thing out. And if I'm looking for the P value, I would be doing A divided by 1 plus I to the N. OK, so that's kind of like our prearranged formula that we talked about at the beginning of this lesson, just in terms of compound interest. OK, so let's enter in to this. 16,000 and then 1 plus 0 0.109 to the exponent 4. And if you'd like, before you enter into your calculator, you could add these together. You got 10,000, Luca? OK. Can we get a couple people to check on their calculator, make sure they got the same thing? You did, Owen? You got the same thing? Oh, OK. Oh, Daniel, you said yeah? OK, so what was it? 10,000? 10,000, 7, Or does the 6 get rounded? No, 7. 6, OK. Beautiful. I just want to make sure. Uh, so, how much, if we started by investing 10500 of our own money, we actually have earned like, like $5,500, right, to get us to 16000 I think that's a lot better than paying uh, the full 16000 ourselves, right? So if we can invest, of course, we'd have to have that lump sum of $10,000. Um, but if you can invest that money um, and make it work for you, then uh, you can actually put it to work later. So therefore, we should invest $10,577.76 in order to have sixteen grand in four years or at the end of university. I'll come check your calculator in a second. OK. Yeah, it ha would have to say compounded this many times. Yeah. OK, so your job, again, three questions. That's all I'm asking you to do is on page 156, 10, 11, 12.